Still, you do everything right and still end up with a breakthrough. And that's the sentiment yeah. from, from checking in with guys on the team that I've yeah. gotten to is that we feel like we've done everything right. So he is experiencing symptoms. We wish him a speedy recovery. And Embiid joins Tobias Harris, Matisse Teibel, and Isaiah Joe as the Sixers in yeah. COVID protocol. So you mentioned it. They've been rolling. How does Philadelphia plan to move forward once again now? Well, this is a good reason they went out and got Andre Drummond. I mean, this is going to help here as they try to move through this stretch. But this is a real setback for them. I mean, they're 8-2, leading in the Eastern Conference. They had a huge win in Chicago the other day. Celebration in that locker room. And this is, um, you know, I, I don't think many of us thought they would go on a roll like this after losing, <laughs> after losing Tobias Harris and Thibault. But they've won a couple of big games here. Joel Embiid hit that dagger against the Bulls to win that game. And... Here you go. It's just been one thing after another. He's had the knee injury that he's been working through and playing through. He was going to sit this game no matter what for rest. But now, obviously, with the positive test, it's going to be a little while. And hopefully he feels better soon. Much more on the 76ers coming up later in the show. But first, Ramona, let's go coast to coast around the NBA, starting with the Nets, who after starting two and three have now won five in a row. Kevin Durant is leading the league in scoring, scoring over 28 points per game. Look how that happens. I know. I mean, I mean, what do you think? What do you think of them so far? Oh, I think he's the MVP favorite at this point. You know, this is that was my preseason pick for MVP, and he's playing right up to it again. So we're going to move over to the Celtics, who got some bad news on Monday that Jalen Brown will miss one to two weeks with a right hamstring strain. Kendrick Perkins, how concerned are you with the Celtics having no Jalen Brown? I'm very concerned. Look, the leading score on the team, he's been very consistent. I'm very scared for the Celtics. Well, let's give some love to two surprise team in the East, the Wizards and the Cavaliers. They just keep winning. Washington is now 7-3, and three, while Cleveland has won four in a row. But it was announced earlier today that Colin Sexton has a torn meniscus, and there's no timetable for his return. But senior NBA insider reported that Woj, he said that he's expected to have an extended absence. And in the two LA teams, they're heading in kind of in different directions. The Lakers are without LeBron and lost by 15 in Portland. While the Clippers, they got Serge Ibaka back and they closed out the Hornets on a 27-4 run to win their fourth straight game after starting 1-4. So now let's take a look and listen to the weekend soundtrack. Luka can walk the ball all the way down mm -hmm. and take the final shot. Here he comes. It's Luka against Josh Richardson. Luka's three is away. Luka magic on a Saturday night. Oh, oh, love it, love it. For one second, I just stood there. I didn't realize I made it. But he's got a little bit of time. Launches. Body ball. Rubio. Fakes. Fires. Puts it in again. Nuggets hanging on to a one-point lead. Tate inside the Curly Ogis blocked the ball. Not today. We are trying to be a good defensive team. Always just happened to be there, you know. And Anthony's ahead of the pack. He'll throw this one with the left. Oh, Anthony putting on a show. I've been looking forward to one of these in person for Facts. quite some time, right? Facts. Shout out to the team, man. Shout out to RJ. Shout out to Dell. Shout out to Mo Bamba. Shout out to my whole team, man. You know we had to go get that dub, man. Shout out to the Magic, man. Let's go. Man, I love news. I love journalism. I love facts. So, go. Cole Anthony? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that guy can play. That might be my winner of the weekend. But, Perk, who was yours? It's the Washington Wizards. All right. And, and shout out to Bradley Beal, right? For I was one of those guys for staying put, saying that, you know, saying that he should leave, but no, he held. He's holding it down, being the leader on and off the court, putting up big, big numbers. Shout out to Kyle Kuzma, who's coming in and showing people that hey, I could get it done without LeBron James and uh, Anthony Davis. Shout out to Montrez Harrell, whose season did end well last night, who's averaging 18 and nine off the bench. The Wizards played great team basketball, and they had. Two huge wins over the weekend, beating uh, the the Memphis Grizzlies and the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah. So shout out to the Wizards. Big game, big game. All right, I I'm going to go with the Cavs on this one All because right. they also have two mm -hmm. big wins. And look, the Wizards are a great pick, but the, the Cavs have wins over Toronto and the Knicks this past weekend. And I made this pick 
pre-Woj bomb, okay. okay, with Colin Sexton. All right. But Darius Garland's played fantastic. Ricky Rubio is back. 37 Rubio. points. I wanted him to hit that three at the end so bad. I got to roll my R's for uh, as a Rubio. Latino. Ricky Rubio, okay, <laughs> had a big game in that one. And of course, Mobley's been very good for them. Jared Allen, a lot of people question yeah. whether that big man rotation would work, even with Laurie Marketing out there playing small forward. He's been a little dinged up, but so far, so good on the results. Ricky Rubio. See? <laughs> What do you All got, right. Ramona? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Kevin Durant, okay? And I was one of those who was sitting about 10 feet away when he tore his Achilles up in Toronto. Mm. So for him to go back there, play a game up there, and leading the league in scoring again, playing at MVP level, especially with the way that Brooklyn has started slowly this year, I think for him to show how far back he's come from that Achilles injury, going back up to the north where it happened, uh, that's my winner of the week. For the first time. Yeah, I think for the first time. So much time has passed, we forget that it was yes, the first right. time that he was up there. So I love being positive. I love happy. But if those were the winners of the weekend, hey, hey. flip the coin. Who's got to step it up, George? The Hornets, they've lost four in a row. Yeah. Now, they get, the, they get the chance today, right, to play against the Lakers here in Los Angeles and kind of redeem themselves. But here's the thing. This was a trendy pick, right? Oh, this team, maybe they can win the division and they win the Southeast. Not so fast. Let's pump the brakes a little bit because in this league, generally speaking, you have to grow, right? Young teams don't just get vaunted into the postseason play and, and become dominant. They've got some players on this team. There's no question about that. Miles Bridges may be the most improved player, but they've got a ways to grow here still, and they're learning through that right now. in the league in offense for the first couple of weeks there, and people make, start to make adjustments. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with Russell Westbrook. Uh, it, you know, that stat line the other night, one for 13. Uh, you know, at least he... He didn't go one for 20, I guess. But that was, a, that was a tough weekend for him, and especially when LeBron James and Anthony Davis are out. This is what they brought Russell Westbrook to Los Angeles to do. When the stars are hurt, when the stars are out, you be the third star. And Russell right. Westbrook has carried teams before all by himself, and it did not happen up in Portland. So we have the perk as the tiebreaker. Who, who are you, where, where, do you, where do you fall in all this in, in the Hornets versus mm -hmm. Russ? I'm going with Ramon on this one, and y'all know how I feel about the yeah. Brody Russell Westbrook, but like Ramona said, he was brought to L.A. for one reason and one reason only, and that's to win the championship. And right now, forget the, t forget the missed shots. Him at the point guard position, he's not doing a great job of running the team. I believe he had six turnovers yeah. the other night. He had a crucial turnover the night of the game before when they could have had a chance, to, I believe, to either take the lead, you know, take the league on a fast break. And Russell Westbrook has to get his mental back. Mm. He has to be yeah. more engaged. He has to come back to the Russell Westbrook that we seen on the tear last year uh, with the Washington Wizards. And right now, he has been a disappointment. Well, he's going to have another chance. They're back at it tonight to see if he can be the one that sort of writes that ship a little bit. And then with, you know, LaMelo Ball, he said afterwards, he said, maybe I needed to come in a little earlier in the fourth quarter. So we'll see how, you know, a little, little call out there. We'll see how that all shakes out. So we're 10 games into the season. So we might as well look at the favorites to win some awards. According to Caesars Sportsbook, it is Steph Curry that is the front runner for MVP. Raptors rookie Scotty hey. Barnes is the favorite for Rookie yep. of the Year. Rudy Gobert, once again, for Defensive Player of the Year. John ja Morant for Most Improved. That was my pick. And Tyler Hero for Sixth Man of the year who told me yesterday yeah. he told me yesterday that's my goal that's what I'm going out to do perk what's the best bet here you know what I like Scotty Barnes for rookie of the year when you, he's a guy that could go out there night in and night out and get you 15 points and 10 rebounds we saw what Kevin Durant said about him yesterday and every night he's starting to show us that he has more to his game than just being athletic long and playing with a lot of energy he has a very high IQ he can really play the game of basketball, and I feel like he's only going to get better, and he wants to get better. So I'm going for Scotty Bourne. Well, and he's putting the Raptors in a conversation that a lot of folks didn't think they would be in to start the season. So still to come on NBA Today, can't, can't we all just get along? Scotty Pippen doubles down on his relationship with Michael Jordan. And when, potentially, maybe, might we see LeBron James? You call Michael Jordan selfish in the first chapter. Why is that? I mean, uh, he was a great scorer, but a lot of things that he did uh, was based on uh, him as an individual. And I think basketball is a team game. Do you think that Michael Jordan would be as successful without you? 
No. But I don't think I would be successful without him. I think we both complemented each other in a lot of different ways. And uh, we kind of competed and pushed each other to be great. Joined by George Ramona and Perk again. So, Perk, I, I do want to start with you. What, what was your reaction, Perk, to what Pippen said on GMA? I don't see nothing wrong with it. I mean, you know, the last dance documentary, Michael Jordan got a chance to tell his story and tell everything that he wanted to say. And Scottie Pippen is promoting his book. And Scottie Pippen has a right to voice on how he feels. Now, whether we agree with it or not, it's his right to voice and say how he felt in the locker room. Now he's giving his side of the story. Look, these old, my old, my grandmother and my grandfather, they got old souls and they used to always tell me, <laughs> everybody has, it's three sides to the story. It's Scotty's, it's Michael's, and then it's the truth. So at the <laughs> end of the day, everybody's entitled to, the, to say what they want to say. So I guess, Ramona, you're the person who's tasked with covering that, that third perspective, yeah. the truth. What do you make of this? You know what? I think Scotty didn't like his portrayal in The Last Dance, especially the end where they talked about the shot that Phil doesn't call for him, right? You know, when he doesn't go into the game. Um, and I think what was hard for Scotty and is, I actually thought his portrayal was really good. I thought his, his enti entire life story is really inspirational. And uh, sometimes we only see the bad parts. Like we don't see the good parts in how we're portrayed. And then the bad parts, you know, Scotty really is still not over that. Mm. He's still not over Phil calling the play for Tony Kukoc. He's not, he was hurt by it. He has not moved on from it. And I think in the documentary, it was framed in a way that it took him right back to when it first happened. That's fine. And, you know, I, I, I felt like when I watched it, his teammates really tried to exonerate him. A lot of people said, you know, that we understood why he was hurt and they tried to exonerate him. But, uh, look, he, he, he still feels the way he feels. Feels the way he feels. Yeah. Scotty's keeping it 100. All right. We yep. mythologize people as time goes by. I'm old enough to remember Michael Jordan being the selfish player that couldn't win yeah. a championship. That was the M.O. on Michael Jordan. So what Scotty's saying is accurate. And what he's saying is he still was that guy. We just had better players around him. Well, if you're old enough to know that, I'm young enough to know this. If they were still playing today. Yeah. Scotty and Michael would be repeatedly featured in our next segment, <laughs> and that is the top of the top. So what the top of the top is, I know we have some, some newcomers to top of yeah. the top. So what the top <laughs> of the top is, Perk, let me tell them about it. Top of the top is the very best plays from around the NBA, from over the weekend, from the night before. So first up, let's start with top putbacks. We start in Chicago where Derek Jones Jr. I mean, where did he come from? Land dunk champ. There's a reason they call him airplane mode, Malika, because you see it right there. Sky and above everybody. Like a two hands, six. Too. Two hands. I mean, what he does, uh, uh, oh my gosh, that was insane. Alright, <laughs> let's go over to Sacramento. Let's take a look at this. I mean, he, oh! oh. Come on, Rashawn. Woo. Come on, Rashawn. That was a Muscling grown right there. man. That's why dunk. the Hornets lost four in a row, right there. Box out! Ooh. I mean, yeah, there was no box out there. Box out and that sort of second oh, effort. Stand in there like. That's why Sacramento's been rolling too. All right, let's do top stop. Hassan Whiteside in Orlando meets Terrence Ross at the oh, rim. Oh. Oh. He said, get that out of here. And kept in bounds there. Hassan has done a really nice job as Rudy Gobert's backup. He got them in that heat game the next night. Well, and then can you can you can you stop this? Take a look. Oh. 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 Oh, uh, oh, oh, really? Bye. How many times? Bye. I mean, he take a look over his shoulder just to make sure he was safe to just cruise the dunk. <laughs> football player growing up because he just stole the ball. Out Come on, Joker! People say you can't play defense. Show him you can. Did he jump? I don't. I mean, probably not. He didn't even look like a jump. That doesn't mean it's not defense. That doesn't mean it's not important. <laughs> All right, let's go to top buzzer beaters. Buddy healed. Let's start there. Look at this. He's oh. coming. Yeah, oh, spin. The what? As my guy Mark Jones likes to say, buddy ball. That was, I think he practices that shot. You got it, but he it's shrugs like, like it's no big deal. All right, check out this one. El oh, Ooh, off Camilo. the glass. Hi, off Mark. the glass. All right, well, then we'll go to Los Angeles last night. Terrence Mann. I mean, right. I'm he made quote, it look easy. I'm going to quote Mark Jackson. Mama, there goes that man. He was gone, and Ty Lue's like, whoa, what just happened? Falling out oh, of bounds. I mean, shot. this is just. And he's done this to the Celtics how many times at this point? It's Probably just, too many. It's just the entire sequence many. that led to this, though. Was yeah, it was insane. All right, let's let's go to top moves. Kyle Lowry in transition finds Caleb Martin. Oh, 
Kyle Lowry has made that Heat de- offense look completely different. This they get up and down the court. Yeah. He's made it sing. We were worried about their half-court offense. What no. a move by no. him. They're good. All right, let's go to Orlando. Bojan Bogdanovic. Oh, hello. Bogdanovic. See, he could have just finished it himself. What a good teammate. He is. That is a great quite teammate. Quite open. He handles he there, too. Himself. He didn't throw oh, no. That was pretty. All right, well, then in D.C., Montrez Harrell. Monster. Look at the little move he hits at the end, too. I love that. Let's this, be honest right there, too. Little, this little hit, the little move. I love that. All right, we got to go to the top slams in the Bay, my hometown. Let's take a look at Gary Payton. My goodness. Can we officially call him Mitten? Is that I, I was going to say, Fresh the club, Mitten. mitten. I, I think it works, I like right? It. He's as like good that. defensively as Pops. We know he get well, maybe not as that's, good, but That's close. saying something right he, there. He club, is as good mitten. defender. That's a good one. All right. Health and safety protocols, a source told ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski and Ramona Shelburne. Embiid leads the 76ers, averaging 21.4 points per game and 9.4 rebounds in nine games this season. And the Sixers have won 46 of the 60 games Joel Embiid has played since the start of last season, but are just 11 and 11 in the games that he's missed. Philly is averaging five more points per game when Embiid plays, so we'll see how they adjust without him. So the Sixers will be without Joel Embiid for the foreseeable future. Perk, what is your outlook on Philly without Joel in the lineup? You know, obviously you can't replace Joel Embiid, arguably the best center in the game of basketball right now, but When you talk about togetherness, when you talk about togetherness, chemistry, the 76ers are showing us that they have come together. And different guys are stepping up different nights. You have Tyrese Maxey, he may step up one night. You have uh, Seth Curry, who's been playing phenomenal, almost at an all-star caliber rate. But most importantly, you have Andre Drummond, a guy that has a lot to prove. A guy that season didn't end well last year. A guy that took the bet minimum. A guy against the Portland Trailblazers a few games back when he started had, what, 14 points, 15 rebounds, and seven assists. And this is what Doc Rivers do. He loved adversity. He loved when their team is back is against the wall. And when you see the Philadelphia 76ers in their chemistry, I think they'll be okay and play solid basketball until MB gets back. Well, and they've just hit so much turbulence this season, right, Perk? And we've mm-hmm. seen guys, like you mentioned, George Niang, those types of guys step up. It's just about how long they're going to be able to sustain that under the pressures that they've already been facing this season. So far, they have, but that's mostly with Joel Embiid. So the Sixers, they have a tough three games coming up at home, hosting the Knicks, the Bucks, the Raptors, before going on a six game road trip that'll include stops in some tough cities, Utah, Denver, Golden State. That Warriors game will be on November 24th. It will be on ESPN and I will be there as well. So so I am curious though, what do you think, Ramona? Do you think that we, we are going to see wins by committee or how long can this be sustained? You know, that upcoming schedule is rough. I mean, they were in the middle part of a, a really difficult stretch here. Now a game against the, the Knicks, the Bucks. Like, this is a, a tough stretch. And I, I was surprised they were winning without Tobias and Thibel. And, and I don't know, the big guy not being there. That's a, that's a real tough stretch them, for them. But still, to be 8-2 and two with the adversity they've already had, not the whole with, with everything going on with Ben and with Joel's knee not, not being in a great place after he knocked knees with Valanciunas the first game, mm-hmm. it's – I don't want to write them off. Yep. I mean, they, they've gone eight and two without, with all of that happening. I'm going to write them off, okay? Oh, okay. Because eight Whoa. and two to this right. point <laughs> is commendable. There's no question Here, about need it. Piece of pen, um, piece but of paper. No, no. I mean, that cross. stretch is brutal. Like, let, let's yeah. be real. You know, you saw the stretch there. So, because of that, I, I just don't think without a star on yep. the roster. Mm-hmm. They're 11 and 11 when Embiid has been out, right? But Ben Simmons was there uh, for a big chunk of those games, yeah. which allowed them to stay afloat. Now's when they really need Ben Simmons, right? Now's when they're going to need that particular player to be able to help carry them. They don't have that on this particular roster. Could they win a game or two? Perhaps. But can they sustain success, which was your question? No, I don't believe so. So how do you see then Doc Rivers approaching this? Oh, well, it's going to have to be just, you know, by committee, right? Like, it's a meritocracy. It's not, a lot it's, of Seth it, Curry, yeah, a lot of Tyrese it, it, Maxey, It's going to be whoever's, hot, Kong, whoever's hot, right? Whoever's right. hot is going to get minutes, and, and they're just going to have to survive right. at this point. But, look, it's early in the season. Even right. if they have a rough stretch, it doesn't mean that they're out of it by any stretch of the imagination. They'll be fine. they just got to survive these next 
10 days or so. All right, well, then let's look at the tough teams that they're going to be playing up against because survive so long as they continue to stay healthy, too. So here's ESPN's power rankings as we head into week four of the season. The Sixers lead the pack as they won all four of their games last week without Tobias Harris and Ben Simmons, who has missed all season. But remember, these power rankings were done before looking back at last week. It wasn't including today's news about Joel Embiid, who's out with COVID. So the Warriors come in second with the best record in basketball at 8-1, and one, who would have thought? The Heat, the Nets, the Jazz, they round out the top five. So I guess I got to start Ramona, George, Perk. He's coming in like the great and powerful Oz over there. As I mentioned, <laughs> ESPN.com's power rankings were released before the news about Joel. But we had some time yeah. to process it. I got it so bad, I know. So let's get into it. Ramona, I'll start with you. <laughs> I had to. Come I on. I know you did. Uh, you know, I, I, I think that I'm going to still keep the Sixers in the top five just okay. out of respect for what they've done. But I don't think they can be number one anymore. So I, to me, it's the Miami Heat because I think offensively and defensively, that looks like the team so far this year. I put the Nets up there at two. I'm, I, I don't necessarily just go based on records, okay? Mm. I'm based on who I think is the best team right now. Um, they got Kevin Durant. He's real good. <laughs> put the Warriors there at three. Um, and, and then you got to get some respect to the Jazz. Yep. And, I, and the Sixers slide down just because of the news on uh, Joel Embiid. So not too concerned about the Jazz loss. All right, Perk, who, who you got? You know what? I think the Miami Heat deserves to be at yep. number one. In my opinion, they have the best team in basketball right now on the offensive end and defensive end. Coming in at number two. I'm going with the Golden State Warriors. The way that uh, Jordan Poole has been playing, Steph Curry, not just scoring a lot of points, but cleaning it up in mm -hmm. other areas, dropping dimes, averaging about seven rebounds per game. Draymond Green anchoring that defense. And number three, I'm going with the Utah Jazz. They have a complete yep. team, bringing back the same team from last year. And then at number four, the 76ers, I gave you my reasons why on them. I feel the camaraderie there. And at number five, I'm going with the Brooklyn Nets. Why? Because Kevin Durant is playing some of the best basketball of his career right now. Absolutely. And I, I like that. Another nod to the Jazz. Nod to the Heat. I'm seeing some themes play out, at least across our, our first two folks. What what do you got for us, George? All right. I got the hot take at the end here. All right. Let's take a look yeah, at I'm what I've got here. Number one. Need a glass of water? Number one, we've got the Heat. We're all, we're all in agreement here. George. Kyle Lowry, by the way. A plus 62 when he's been on what? the floor this season. I'm sorry. Can you repeat plus that, Plus 62. In 62? Same, okay, for Kyle Lowry thus far this season. In nine games? They are, yep, they are no, <laughs> They're number two on offense, number four on defense. Eric Spolstra, Kyle Lowry, and them got him humming. Uh, I got the Warriors Ooh. at number two. Listen, they've been really good defensively well, as well. They're number four yeah. and number six offense and defense. I've got the Nets because, as Ramona mentioned, Kevin Durant, still good. Uh, and the Jazz, despite <laughs> their loss to the Magic, I still have them in my top five. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I think that offensively and defensively, they're still just so sound. They just had a little slip mm. up after the loss of the Heat against the Magic. Now, I had the Sixers originally at three before we readjusted, but I have the Clippers at number five. Here's why. Mm. Four wins in a row. Paul George, the Western Conference Player of the Week that was just announced recently. Mm. He is carrying this Clippers team right now, and they are... When healthy, if Kawhi comes back, a championship-level team, and we saw that they went to the Western Conference Finals last year with this particular group, I still give them the respect. They're playing really well right now. Perk, I hear you humming and hawing like you're at, at church and they're saying some gospel <laughs> that you like. What do you think? What, what, what Sedona said? I, I actually like that pick at the end. It wasn't my pick, but I, I do believe Ty Lu has these guys playing great basketball. And then... Uh, their last two games has been really impressive for the simple fact that they were down, I believe, double figures in both of those games at yep. halftime, and they had to go out and get it in the trenches, meaning they had to come together. You see different guys stepping up night in and night out, and yes, they're out there without Kawhi Leonard, but they also without Marcus Morris. And so when you see Terrence Mann, you see Reggie Hot Sauce Jackson coming to play and doing this thing. I love what Ty Lue is doing. I love his him having faith in different guys and putting them out there in position to be successful.
Well, you, we, we said that's top five. We're talking top five in power rankings. But it sounds like the Clippers, for at least for Perk, might be someone, a team that could sneak in for next week. So we'll reevaluate. The game on Tuesday against mm-hmm. the Trailblazers. Yep, big game. You mentioned the Western Conference Player of the Week in Paul George, the Eastern Conference Player of the Week, the Fro, Jared Allen. Yep. So that's, that's good on him. <laughs> but one team that didn't make it into anybody's top five this week was the Los Angeles Lakers. So what has gone wrong for the Lakers to start the season? A lot has to do with injuries, especially to LeBron James. He's already missed a whole bunch of games. We'll get into that after the break. No defense at all for the Lakers. You gotta play harder. You gotta play harder. Uh, every possession, every minute that we have on the floor has to matter. OKC comes into Staples Center and beats the Lakers. We shouldn't have lost this one. It didn't come down to LeBron not being here. We still have enough pieces to win basketball games. It's plain and simple. I'm far from brittle. Unbreakable. You following? We let this one go again. We shouldn't have lost this one. So what has gone so wrong for the Lakers to start this season? A lot has to do with injuries, especially to LeBron James. He's already missed four of the Lakers' ten games with an ankle injury and now an abdominal strain. And the Lakers are one and three without him. And their new superstar, Russell Westbrook, has struggled to fit in. He's shooting just 42% from the field and 27% from three-point range. And he is leading the league in turnovers at 4.9 per game. And their defense has also taken a bit of a step back. Remember, last season, the Lakers had the best defensive efficiency in the NBA. And then two years ago, when they won that bubble championship, they were third. However, this season, they have slipped to 13th. So I want to rejoin the panel, talk to them a little bit about this. Ramona, let's start with LeBron's abdominal strain. Mm -hmm. What is his prognosis today? So this happened last week, towards the end of last week. Right. And at the time, the sense was it would be one to two weeks. Uh, The abdominal strain he has, I'm told, it's it's not it doesn't feel all that bad right now. It's not necessarily something that's causing him a ton of pain, but uh, it's something you need to be really careful with because it can get worse. And so that's why he's taking a, a longer timetable on this because he does not want to have another setback with this. He doesn't want to be out four or six weeks if he has a setback. So this is why you have to be careful right now. Still just one to two, one to two weeks here, but can't get back soon enough because when he's not out of the court, that offense is not working. And clearly, and that defense is even worse. 13th in defensive efficiency, which isn't what we're used to, Mm -hmm. Perk, from these Los Angeles Lakers. Oh, oh, my bad. I didn't hear you, Malik, but look. I was gathering <laughs> That's all right. my thoughts. I know you're going to go no, for it. No, 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 no. It's fine. I was gathering my thoughts, but look, here it is, okay? The Lakers are built to do what? They're built to win a championship. Yeah. Russell Westbrook was, was, was a, uh, acquired for what? To take pressure off of Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Russell Westbrook is leading the NBA in turnovers. The media, a reporter, asked Russell Westbrook about those same turnovers in preseason. And Russell Westbrook didn't give the answer that we expected him or I thought that he should have given us. He was like, oh, it's just preseason, basically. And now, after the game that they played at home when he had the turnovers, a reporter asked Russell Westbrook again about, you know, the late game turnovers. And he kind of answered in not so in a not-so-professional matter. So when I look at the Los Angeles Lakers, even even without LeBron James, they have zero excuse to come out and play that the way they did against Portland. Mm. Portland had been struggling. You still have guys like Carmelo Anthony. You still have Dwight Howard. You still have Avery Bradley. You still have Rajon Rondo. You still have Malik Monk. You still have... have enough to at least go out there and compete. It was just so bad. I mean, it was so bad that I was watching the game with my two oldest sons and I made them go to bed early because I didn't want them picking up all bad habits. Oh, man. I know what that... My my father used to make me go to bed early for some of those Warriors games in the early 2000s. Yeah, but but, but Perk mentioned that this is a team, George. It's built to win a championship and you had them winning the championship to start the season. Ramona did too. So so yep. where does that stand now? Yep. Uh, I believe there were three people at ESPN.com who predicted uh, a Lakers championship. You yeah. have two of them here on the panel today. Excellent. Um, I have them at the moment with this particular roster as currently constituted 
a bottom tier playoff team. I think oh. they need to make real changes. Um, and look, here's the thing I worry about with LeBron. You know, Perk mentioned it a little bit, right? You mentioned it. Russ was supposed to fix this. When LeBron was out, he was supposed to be able to take the reins, no issues, right? Last season, when LeBron was on the floor, the Lakers were the second best offense in the sport. When he wasn't on the floor, 28. That is what Russ was supposed to fix, and he hasn't to this point. Historically, though, the biggest predictor of future injury is past injury, and we're getting to this stage with LeBron. Well, I think he'll be fine because he'll play this smart. He knows his body better than anyone. I start to worry about it because he may need to miss more games, and historically, outside of his tenure with the Heat, every other team he's been on has been under 500 when he's there, and this Lakers team doesn't have a ton of excuses to be this bad at this point without LeBron. You know, I, it feels to me like Russ is just putting too much pressure on himself. He's trying too hard. I remember at the beginning of the season, I went to the premiere of his, his uh, documentary that was on Showtime. The entire Laker team showed up to support him. And one of the things he kept saying in that documentary was, this means a lot. I just don't want to mess it up. Yeah. And this, is, this means a lot to Russ to be here in his hometown in front of friends and family. Yep. He looks right now like he's just trying so hard out there. And that leads to all those turnovers. Yeah. I, part. I, I can. I can. I can hear Perk kind of <laughs> guffawing a little bit, but I, I, I think that that has some merit to it. So, so I want to hear from Russell Westbrook. Let's take a listen after Saturday's loss to the Trailblazers here. I don't put no pressure on myself to do anything. Um, I'm very elite at what I do, and uh, I believe that every single night. Um, and that's how I need to play. Simple as that. There's no extra pressure of any sort for me. I, in some ways, admire that outlook because I think that, you know, as a bunch of people, we, we put pressure on ourselves. It's, that's, that's human nature. But Perk Westbrook says, at least he says externally, that he's not putting extra pressure on himself. Sh should he be? Yes, he should. I mean, and that's that's the fun part about going to a team where you expected to win a title. It's pressure. And I have been on a few teams where it's been pressure. And you embrace that type of pressure. Because you don't get an opportunity. An opportunity don't present itself like this throughout a lot of players' NBA careers where you actually have a chance to win a NBA championship. And I said this, you know, when Russell Westbrook started struggling at the beginning of the season when I was on this show uh, in studio, and I said, Russell Westbrook has to find himself, himself some type of grace of being home, right? Being home... Uh, blocking out the outside distractions and focusing on solely basketball. You know, not commercials, not events, just basketball. Everything else could wait till after the season is over with. Now, you know, Perk was on a team in 2018, I believe, with the Cleveland Cavaliers. He may have been gone already, but that Cleveland Cavaliers team with LeBron, they jettisoned half the roster. Basically, okay, mm -hmm. what at, at the trade deadline. If Russell Westbrook doesn't step it up, Rob Palink is going to have a lot of decisions on his hands to try to figure out to get this team to championship caliber. Perk? Uh, I got one more one more thing to add on to this. Finger up. Anytime for it. you're <laughs> on a team with LeBron James, it's going to be pressure. Period. Mm, period. With a DT at the end. <laughs> so, a bit of news coming out on the Lakers. Anthony Davis has been upgraded to probable for tonight's game versus the Hornets. Remember, he left Saturday's game versus the Trailblazers a little bit early. The Lakers are saying Davis has a common cold. So, coming up on NBA Today, we go to the White House, where the attentacoop bros are feeling very <laughs> presidential. Heading over to D.C. <laughs> after this. Suited and Acropolis with his new hardware. He and his partner Mariah welcomed their second son to the world this summer, and he bought into the Brewers ownership group too. And then today marks another special day for Giannis and the Bucks. They are visiting 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, and it marks the first time an NBA champion has been honored at the White House since the Cavaliers on November 11th, 2016, by President Barack Obama. So take a listen to President Biden and to Giannis Antetokounmpo. To all the players, uh, uh, that's what you re represent for so many people. Pride. Pride and decency. Just look at the enduring images during the finals. Thousands of fans celebrating in the Deer District of, and the, uh, the Herb Cole Way. You know, you represented yourselves and your families, your organizations, and a great American city by staying true to who you are. You did the work of in the off season and during the grueling regular season. In the playoffs, down 0-2 against Brooklyn, 
and then to make it just to keep your the owners and, and, and your coach and and constant perspiring. Uh, you uh, on the finals, you were down zero to two against Phoenix, but you never gave up. I watched. It was amazing how you came back. You always believed, and Coach Bud, you got them to play as a team. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mark. Um, on behalf of my teammates, the coach staff, the Bucks organization, we are very uh, grateful for this opportunity. Um, you know, a kid from um, Sepolia, Athens, Greece, grew up from um, two Nigerian parents that they were struggling every day to uh, provide for us. Illegal in a, a country that they didn't call home at the time. It's an unbelievable opportunity to be able to be in 